If you've ever installed your own or set up your own DIY off-grid solar setup, you might think that a grid tie installation is daunting. And in, in some ways, it's actually a whole lot more simple when you don't have to deal with batteries and charge controllers and it's just solar panels and inverters. But let me show you an example. What I've got set out here is the very minimum of what my inverter can handle. And this is six panels in series. And this mess of wiring down here, which would typically be the modules mounted on the backs of the panels, is not microinverters, these actual optimizers. Now, SolarEdge is the one known for optimizers, at least in my opinion, because if you're doing a commercial installation, commercial installation, residential rooftop installation, you're typically either in phase or your solar edge. I mean, there's other players in the market, but those are the two big ones. And you might ask, why is there a module for every single solar panel? And that's because when you're in residential rooftop, you have to typically abide by the code. The code. And 2017 and 2020 NEC codes say that, and don't quote me on this, but this is the, the gist of it, um, rapid shutdown is a must and it must bring the voltage on the roof down to 80 volts or less within 30 seconds. I believe 30 seconds is the number. <clears throat> what this means when you're dealing with panels that are 40 volts, 50 volts a piece, that every single panel has to have some sort of electronics that isolate it from the rest of the system, the rest of the array, the inverter, everything. Now this is easy when you've got something like an in-phase microinverter. One of these puppies is the DC to AC conversion right here. So this takes the DC from the solar panel and it converts it to 240 volts AC. Now if it's not seeing 240 volts AC, such as if the fireman switch down near the meter is flipped off, then it just stops producing, which means the only voltage is ava available is what's coming from the panel into the inverter. And that, unless you've got some weird oddball panels, is gonna be less than 80 volts. So that abides by the code. Now the other way to do it, and SolarEdge you know, figured this out, I assume they're the ones that figured it out or they you know, took a cue from somebody else, is to have an optimizer on every panel. Now optimizers do two things. One thing that they do is they allow the panels to act individually when you're talking about shade and output. So if you've got slightly different outputs between panels or this one gets some shade from a, shade from a chimney, then having an optimizer allows that one panel to drop in power output without affecting the rest of the panels in series with it. Now, it's, it's a little bit of a wives' tale that you, know, you shade one panel, you lose everything when they're in series because there are bypass diodes in every commercially available solar panel that can bypass you know, one third of this panel or the whole panel if that panel's being shaded bad enough. But it requires the MPPT algorithm to be able to do that appropriately and doesn't always work perfectly. So optimizers are certainly a benefit there. So that's one thing that the optimizers do. The other thing is now that you've got a, an electronic on the back of every panel, you can do rapid shutdown. And the way that works is these optimizers have to communicate back to the inverter. And so when that inverter comes on, it starts communicating with these and say, hey guys, it's time to produce some power. Let's do this thing. And so they will start spitting out voltage current onto the wires because the optimizers are what are connected in series with each other and then this panel is connected to that optimizer this panel to that optimizer so if the inverter gets shut down suddenly these guys don't have any communication saying hey let's produce some power and so they just shut off and so it's the same thing as in phase where you know this wire here that's running from one panel to the next which is really one one optimizer to the next suddenly has no voltage on it um, or at least no significant voltage. The Solar Edge ones do like one volt per panel, um, just so that you can tell that all the optimizers are online. This one doesn't seem to do that. It just seems to be like zero to five volts-ish. So that means that these wires here, which obviously wouldn't be strung along the ground, no longer have any power on them if the fireman switch is tripped or the power is out at the house. Now, residential rooftops, that's what that's for. Um, if you're installing on a ground mount or you're installing on an outbuilding, as far as I know, rapid shutdown per panel or rapid shutdown at all is not required. Um, it's residential rooftops. That's where the big deal is. And there might be some issues with commercial rooftops. I don't know. It's residential rooftop installations. That's what 2017-2020 NEC code address with having to either have optimizers or Tigo rapid shutdown modules, or in-phase microinverters, chili cone microinverters, you know, lots of options, uh, Hoy miles, lots of microinverters. Microinverter just kind of the way that a microinverter works. 
complies with the way NEC has written this. Um, so that's like a real easy out, but then optimizers work too. When you first commission this inverter, you'll need to connect directly to it via an Android device. Um, Android, because I've tried with my iPhone and it hasn't worked, it could be it would work with yours, but basically just bring up the Fusion Home app and it'll walk you through scanning the QR code on the side of the device and getting logged in. That creates a Wi-Fi connection directly from your device over to the inverter. Once you're inside the inverter, you can go in and change which Wi-Fi network it is connected to. So I would just swing it over to connect to your local Wi-Fi network or your IoT network or whatever it is. Um, and then once it's logged in, which takes an extraordinary amount of time for some reason, you're able to get back out, disconnect from the inverter within the app and late. connect back to your normal Wi-Fi, which you connected the inverter to. Um, and once you're on the normal Wi-Fi and it's on the normal Wi-Fi or on your Wi-Fi router, then you'll be able to get back into the inverter. So you see here, I'm connecting back to my Bean Brothers Wi-Fi. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to the device page. Actually, it takes me back there automatically and I'll see a device available and that's my inverter. Presumably, if I had two of these inverters online, I'd have two of them there. The installer password is five zeros and an A, all lowercase, well, you know, zeros are typically lowercase. Or are they all uppercase? I don't even know. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is go into our parameter configuration and go into the expert configuration here. And one thing on the grid parameters is to make sure you're on the right thing at my pre 240 volt for you. But on the feature parameters, you're gonna do this unlock optimizers thing. And the reason for that is if the optimizers were synced to a different inverter, I assume that was the problem, then if you go to search for your optimizers, they don't show up. So once they're unlocked, now we can go in and add a device and we can do auto search for the optimizers. And this can take quite a while, but it will find the optimizers so that you can add them to your system. Now, I've been sitting here waiting for uh, my tablet to be able to communicate to the inverter, which it is communicating, um, and bring these things online and search for the optimizers because you gotta get that communication going between the inverter and the optimizers. And uh, I realized I didn't have my switch on, so that's on. Um, still wasn't working though, um, and then I realized, oh right, my other switch. So, got that on, because I've got my wires running over to there, and I run those up and over so that I'm not running across the ground. And then from there, we're running into the inverter.